we have this evening's second creative team, Candace Fleming and Eric Roman. Candy's upcoming book is Cubs in the Tub, the true story of the Bronx Zoo's first woman zookeeper. And Candy and Eric's new picture book, which came out this past spring, is Honeybee, the busy life of Apis Millifera, which received a stunning seven-starred review. All right, Candy and Eric, turning it your way. Hey, y'all. Hey, guys. We're, um, we've got two different places going. Can you hear us? Yes, Nicole? Yes? Yep, okay. you're all set. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Fantastic. Um, so we kind of have a little bit of two different things going. So we are really happy to be here today. And we're also really, really missing all of you. Oh, yeah, hide that other bit. Um, <laughs> we're really missing all of you. We really wish we could be with you today, but we're so glad to be here this way. And so um, we wanted to talk a little bit about um, our new books. We have, this is our little studio. You're in our, our library today. Um, I have Cubs in the Tub, which is out in August, which is illustrated by the amazing and beautiful Julie Downing. And it's a piece of nonfiction about um, the Bronx's first woman zookeeper, Helen Martini. Um, and the book that I have with this guy here, um, it's called Honeybee. It's the busy life of Apis Mellifera, in fact, also nonfiction. And it's about the life of one honeybee from the day that she is born, so to speak, the day she chews her way into the hive um, until, spoiler alert, the day, the last day of her life. And all of the um, chores and tasks and amazing life that she has in between that day and the last day of her life. Um, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, no, no, uh, yeah, exactly. And we are we are completely stunned. Like when Nicole said seven stars, we go like this because every time we hear that, yeah. we kind of freak out. But um, we're grateful that people love Apis as much as we love Apis. So today we thought we would take you on a little tour of our little house. Um, we're going to switch over and put this this on mute, and we're going to put this little computer on so that we can walk you around. Yeah, not complicated in the least. Yeah, not the least bit. No. Um, you want to put that one on mute so we don't hear ourselves. Fantastic. Okay. Um, you guys see me now? Yeah. So okay. there's Kim. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what's why are we echoing? All right. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through our house. We're going to walk down our little hall. And the first one we're going to go to, I want you guys to notice I put on a dress for you guys, um, which is so unusual. So we're going to come on down to the hall. Um, this is my office. Um, you'll see first that I have this knocker. It's my fox knocker. What that means is if my door is closed, then you better knock before you come in. Um, Eric has learned his lesson more than once pushing open the door and um, discovering that I'm writing. And it's sort of like the exorcist, I guess my head turns around. Um, but I'll let you guys in. This is my office. This is where I work. Um, I cleaned up a little bit for you. Um, I have a, a shelf full of what we refer to as my tchotchkes. We travel a lot. And so I always choose the ugliest souvenir that I can find to add to my um, shelf of souvenirs. Um, you can see that I have my wall full of, you know, awards. And, and they're wonderful. Um, and then, of course, my desk where I work. And it's a huge mess right now because I'm in the middle of a huge project. And I'll show it to you um, because here it is. Um, this is it. I actually have a new um, middle break nonfiction that I'm working on. And I actually write everything by hand first, my first draft. So um, this is my first draft. It's about 400 pages written in, yes, wide line, loose leaf paper and a big pen. Um, 
this is where everything gets written. Um, if you twirl around, you'll see that I have art, of course, from my favorite illustrator, Eric Roman, and I have some stuffed animals. Other art from Chris Shivan, another one of my favorite illustrators, um, and a lot of research. As you can see, boxes and boxes of research, the things that I'm working on right now. Um, if we go upstairs, right directly above me, um, interestingly, above me is Eric's studio, which means that whenever Eric's having a bad day up there, I can hear him, um, which also means that I have a lot of days that I go to the library to work. So come on, I'll take you upstairs. <laughs> I'm surprised the dog hasn't come to introduce himself. All right, I don't know if I want to go first because you'll see that I'm wearing my house slippers instead of... So we have this spiral staircase. I'm not taking you anything where you shouldn't be. Um, and upstairs here is Eric's studio. Do you want to take sure. over and I'll switch off with you? Where's the dog? Well, uh -huh. And there's the dog. He's come to meet you. Okay. Hey, everybody. Um, you can see that this is a uh, was an attic space at one time, and it sort of looks like we're inside a ship. Um, it's all cedar paneled. Um, it's one of the two spaces I use. I have a space downstairs that has a, uh, uh, my printing press. But up here is kind of where I start stuff, where I plan stuff. Um, I have all the windows closed. That's why it seems so dark in here. But um, I, you can just see if I walk around here that um, this is the desk where I start things. And I'm just, uh, right now, I'm not actually working on a, I have some ideas for a new project, but I'm just right now working on collages, uh, trying bunches of different things, trying to figure out uh, what I want to do next. Um, I, I always work in, uh, not only on the flat desk, but uh, in sketchbooks as well. Um, and in sketchbooks, um, anything can happen. Um, Here's one of the pages of the sketchbook and then the next page shows something that has nothing to do with what was on the page before. Um, this is where, these are where the germ of the idea begins. Uh, I might have something that I'm thinking about um, and then I get to sit down and um, either play. Here's some, I found that whenever I'm stressed, uh, drawing dinosaurs helps. Uh, Matt uh, draws Star Wars, uh, I draw, um, dinosaurs. Um, so making collages enables me to start thinking in a visual way and also to th start thinking in a way that has nothing to do with the way I make pictures. If you look at the pictures up on the wall there, um, there's no mistaking that they're from my hand. Uh, if I make a collage, it doesn't look like it's from necessarily from my hand. In fact, it doesn't even really look like something you'd see in a children's book. <laughs> but um, so that's where the, the process begins. And let me just show you one more thing here. And that's this. This is what I get from Candy. This is what she gives me. This is a, a manuscript of Honeybee and their little notes that I've written. And at least for the cover, things begin this way and then move on to this. And then trying to figure out the entire cover. And they eventually end up looking like this is the actual painting. Mm. Right. And I got to be honest with you, I like the painting part. But my favorite part of the process is um, that beginning part where anything is possible, where I can play where there's no expectation for something to be finished. Um, and so uh, what you saw with the collages, what you see with the drawings there, that's the part that's uh, pure play. And then eventually you find your way to having to do a finished book. Um, Neil insists on a deadline. So- uh, And a finished book. And a finished book, <laughs> really. You know, that whole thing, you know, we'll send you a check, you send us a book kind of thing. And eventually it works out that way. So uh, thanks. Thanks. And <laughs> next time ALA's in Chicago, you can come to our That's house. That's great.